Hey guys, this is Fletch here, bringing you another Premier League review show, this time for game 28 of the 2018-19 season. There was plenty of talking point, points, plenty of goals, actually some spectacular goals in fact, and of course results that affected both ends of the table and even results that affected the race for the top four. So without further ado, Let's get into the review show for this round of fixtures. And we're going to begin with Maurizio Sarri's Chelsea, who bounced back from Carabao Cup disappointment to beat rivals Tottenham 2-0 at Stamford Bridge. Before kickoff, the game received a lot of attention regarding the team news and whether or not Blues goalkeeper Kepa Arizabalaga would retain his place following his actions in the Carabao Cup final on Sunday. And it was revealed that despite Sarri claiming he's still his number one choice, Kepa was indeed dropped in favour of Willy Caballero. Nonetheless, it was Chelsea who took the lead shortly before the hour mark through Pedro's strike that beat Hugo Lloris. Later on in the game, Spurs literally gifted Chelsea's second goal when a lack of communication led to Kieran Trippier passing beyond his own goalkeeper who came rushing out of his goal and the ball trickled into his own net. As Chelsea claimed all three points and kept up their pursuit of a top four finish. A much needed win this for Chelsea to keep up the pace with Manchester United and Arsenal. It wasn't pretty by any means, but they got the job done. As for Tottenham, if their title hopes weren't completely gone following their last defeat to Burnley, they are pretty much all gone now. Even further bad news is that they could be drawn into a fight for the top four if Arsenal beat them in the North London derby on Saturday. The Gunners will then only be a point behind Spurs. And to make matters even worse, Harry Kane could be looking at a possible suspension following an altercation he had with Cesar Azpilicueta. Although with how Tottenham's uh, how well, although with how Tottenham's recent performances have been going with Kane in the team, maybe that might help them. Next, we come to Liverpool, who kept up their pursuit of the Premier League title with an emphatic 5-0 win over Watford. Sadio Mane kicked things off for the Reds inside 10 minutes by opening the scoring and went on to double the Reds lead 10 minutes later with a lovely back heeled finish. Uh, Divock Origi, who was slightly a surprising starter uh, to the game for Liverpool, added their third in the second half before Virgil van Dijk scored two headers goals to round off a great performance by Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Superb result and performance by the Reds here. They bounced back well from their two rather dull goalless draws last week to remain one point ahead of Manchester City. And now they turn their attention to the Merseyside derby on Sunday. As for Watford, poor performance or just outplayed? I'm not too sure. They can write this game off and focus on their next one. It's a game to forget if you're associated with the Hornets. Next, we come to Manchester City, who kept up the pace for Liverpool after a 1-0 victory over West Ham, although it wasn't the most convincing of wins. Uh, Sergio Aguero got the only goal of the game from the penalty spot after Felipe Anderson was judged to have tripped Bernardo Silva in the penalty area. It looked a little soft, but the referee pointed to the spot regardless, and Aguero stepped up and made no mistake in converting from 12 yards. City went on to see the game out and remain one point behind league leaders Liverpool. It's unconvincing victory this one for City, but it's a victory nonetheless. The penalty did look soft, but they've been known to be given before them types of penalties. Uh, but regardless, the bottom line is City win, keep up the pace of Liverpool and now turn their attention to Bournemouth on Saturday. At a West Ham, a brave and resilient display, undone via a controversial decision. The Hammers fall to 10th and now turn their attention to Newcastle on Saturday where they'll hope to bounce back. Our next game saw Arsenal breeze past Bournemouth as the Gunners ran wild beating the Cherries by 5 goals to 1 at the Emirates. Meza Ozil drew first blood for the Gunners inside 5 minutes before the German turned from goal scorer to provider where after a 1-2 between him and M Henrik Mkhitaryan, Mkhitaryan fired home from close range. A few minutes after, Bournemouth half a deficit when Matteo Guendouzi was caught in possession by Dan Gosling. He then set up Mousse, 
who gave Bournemouth hope of a comeback. However, in the second half, all hopes of a comeback were soon extinguished when the first, Lauren Koscielny added Arsenal's third, sweeping home from across, and despite Arta Boric's best efforts, uh, goal line technology played its part, rule, and it ruled that Koscielny's shot did indeed cross the line. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang rounded Boric to add Arsenal's fourth goal before Alexander Lacazette rounded off the performance with a free kick that Boric got a hand to but couldn't stop from hitting the back of the net. Huge win this for Arsenal, it gives them extra momentum going into Saturday's North London derby with Tottenham. A win there could see the Gunners go at just a single point behind Spurs. Something quite remarkable considering the season that both sides have had. As for Bournemouth, Poor performance and result, they need to bounce back uh, in their next game against Manchester City, whether they do or not, a different question. Um, they shouldn't finish too far away from where they are currently in 12th, so they're pretty much safe and probably can endure a stress-free end to the season. The next game on this list sees Southampton leapfrog Cardiff and out of the bottom three after a 2-0 victory over Fulham heaped more misery onto Claudio Ranieri's side and gave Southampton an important three points against a fellow relegation rival. Oreo Romeo put the Saints ahead with 23 minutes on the clock and shortly before half-time, James Ward-Prowse doubled their lead as the Saints went on to see the game out with all three points going to St. Mary's. It's a big win for Southampton. They're out of the bottom three for now. And with Manchester United coming up next, they may fancy their chances of getting a good result in that game, especially considering United's injury concerns and the way that Southampton have both the players and the ways of hurting United. As for Fulham, I said before the game, failure to win this game and you'd have to consider their fate all but sealed. Relegation is now seemingly inevitable for them. They're 10 points from safety and with Chelsea coming up next for them, things don't get any easier if you're a Fulham fan, supporter or anything associated with the club. Next, we're off to Selhurst Park as Romelu Lukaku scored twice as an injury hit Manchester United kept up the pace with Arsenal in pursuit of a top four finish. The Belgian striker scored either side of the half time to put Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side 2 0 in front before Joel Ward half the deficit midway through the second half. Any chance of a comeback though for Palace was killed off late on when Ashley Young netted United's third goal of the evening. Uh, the win is not only big for United in terms of the top four. Uh, the top four race but it also means that United have now gained a club record of eight consecutive away wins. Selhurst Park is not an easy place to go to but United have survived and credit where it's due. As for Palace it ends their mini run that they've been on as of late they'll look to bounce back and keep up their bid to survive relegation in their next Premier League outing. The King Power Stadium is the setting for our next game as Leicester City put on a winning display in front of their new manager, Brendan Rodgers, as the Foxes beat Brighton 2-1. The Northern Irish manager was confirmed to take the vacant manager position at the King Power Stadium an hour before kickoff, and he went on to watch his new side from the stands, and fortunately for him, it only took 10 minutes for his new side to score. Demari Gray drew first blood for the Foxes before Jamie Vardy got Leicester's second after the hour mark. Davy Proper half the deficit shortly after, but Brighton couldn't find the equaliser and Leicester held out to claim all three points. It's a good win for Leicester this one in front of their new manager who I believe will be a good appointment for the Foxes. He of course knows the league from his time with both Swansea and Liverpool. He's since gone away, rebuilt his reputation with Celtic and is now back. He will bring us a style Leicester fans will be happy to see and has got a good young side full of quality to work with. Exciting times lie ahead for the Foxes. As for Brighton, alarm bells should be starting to ring. Still no win in 2019 and they're being pulled down into the relegation fight despite their early season form being pretty decent. They really need to start picking up points again as soon as possible.
Next, we come to a Wolves side who were left stunned following a late Stephen Mounier winner at the John Smith Stadium, which caused Huddersfield to pick up an unlikely victory. Their first in 15 games in all competitions and a run that lasted three months. And coincidentally, their last win was in fact over Wolves back in November. In the dying embers of the game, Mounier grabbed the all-important winner to give new manager Jan Seewert his first victory as Terrier's manager and give them three points that gives them a small glimmer of hope of survival, albeit an unlikely one. A poor result for Europa League chasing Wolves this one, but this is the kind of thing they've been capable of doing this season. They'll look to bounce back against Cardiff on Saturday, uh, but as for Huddersfield, a good fighting display, a good three points to keep them believing, but I still don't expect them to cause a major shock and survive, unfortunately, as it may be. Next on this list, Newcastle beat Burnley by two goals to nil to end Burnley's eight-game unbeaten streak as Rafa Benitez's side gained three more points towards their survival bid. Fabian Shaw opened the scoring with an absolute screamer from distance. Seriously, watch this goal. It's not bad from a defender at all. Uh, Sean Longstaff then scored his first Premier League goal to double the Magpies lead and from there Newcastle saw the game out. Uh, superb result for Newcastle this one as they move into 13th, 6 points away from the drop zone. Benitez again showing why he's doing an outstanding job there. As for Burnley, bit of a reality check for them following their unbeaten streak and they'll be looking to bounce back this weekend. And finally, after a two-week break from competition, Everton returned to Premier League action to beat Cardiff 3-0 at the Cardiff City Stadium. 41 minutes were on the clock when Gilfie Sigurdsson broke the deadlock and the Icelandic midfielder went on to double the Toffees' lead in the second half. Dominic Calvert-Lewin rounded off the performance, scoring Everton's third goal of the evening in added time. It's a good win for Everton this one, uh, relieves some of the pressure on Marco Silva but if they don't build any sort of consistency then it will all be back on them next week. A Merseyside derby is coming up next for the Toffees. As for Cardiff, poor defeat and it means that the Bluebirds are back in the relegation zone following Southampton's victory. Um, it's really a case of chopping and changing down at the bottom of the table it just shows you how close things are down there be interesting to see if Cardiff can bounce back this weekend and that wraps up this Premier League review show for game 28 of the 2018-19 season guys if you have any thoughts opinions or anything on any of the games that I've talked about in this round of fixtures please let me know in the comments section below I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down there otherwise guys Hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new or subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Both will be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Premier League review show. And I will see and speak with you all again soon in another video.